Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Shed with me, Mark. I've taken the plunge and I've grabbed myself a Raspberry Pi, mainly to build myself a retro gaming setup. And I'm using Retro Pi. So for those of you that haven't heard of that, this is an emulation suite. It has every emulator you can think of, apart from the sort of more powerful ones, all built into the one SD card image. It's very simple to deploy and as you can see here, it looks great. I've gone for this pixel theme and once you set off RetroPie to scrape all these covers of all these games and descriptions and everything else, it looks blooming fantastic. So let's go and have a look at what I bought and what you will need to get this up and running for yourself. Right, so here we go. This is the stuff I bought. I just thought I'd show you up in, in close-up detail just exactly what it is. So I'm going to show you one thing at a time. And the first thing here is the USB reader. It's, it's a very simple thing that I'm sure you've all probably already got. But I grabbed this one. It's the Transcend one. And uh, it just pops open like that so the USB is protected. It, it's not much more to it than that. You all know what USB SD card reader is. The next thing I've got is the official plug um, and as you can see here this is what you get. So there's a whole load of uh, foreign plugs. We're just going to ignore those. I'll put those in the box. But the thing I really like about this is the Raspberry Pi symbol. <laughs> That's really ridiculous but there's a few there's a few plugs around. Uh, I'll let you decide which um, which plug you want to get, but at least this one has the opportunity to swap the plug part out for American or, or European or English or whatever you want. So I've got the English plug on there, that's for me. The next thing I bought is a case. You have to get a case for your Raspberry Pi, otherwise it's completely exposed. Um, so let's just open that up and I'll show you what it is that I've bought. So this is the case I've bought, which I really like the look of. It's a transparent case, as you can see there. So that goes on the top, that part goes on the bottom, and the Raspberry Pi goes in between. Yep, so that's very simple. And we've got some screws and some other bits and bobs that go with it there. So that's the case. And finally, the last thing I've grabbed is the actual Raspberry Pi itself, which comes in a box like this, and you get some instructions, blah, blah, blah and the actual Pi. Look how tiny that is. There's nothing of it. It's ridiculously small. I kind of expected this to be bigger. Not much, because I've seen it in other people's hands, but maybe their hands were <laughs> smaller than mine. But uh, it is tiny, there's nothing of it. So there you go, that's the board itself, and look how tiny it is. Um, HDMI here, network, USB ports. Underneath, as you can see here, is where the SD card goes. So literally, that's it. What a beauty, look at that. So that's that, and I've got my SD card here. Up to you what you do SD card wise, I'm sure a, a sort of 16 gig, 32 gig card would be just as good, but I wanted to get, I've had this one for a while, and uh, this is probably the best thing I could use it for. So I can cram lots of PlayStation ISOs and I can cram N64 ROMs and SNES ROMs and everything else on there and it won't run out of space. That's the plan. So that's it. That's what I bought. I'm just going to put it together and I will show you what it looks like. So there you go. That's the finished article. It took me, I don't know, about 20 minutes to put it together, mainly because of the fiddly little plastic screws which go at the bottom. Um, let's have a look at it a bit closer. So there you go, you can see the raspberry symbol there. It's actually etched out, you can see it's actually holes. Um, we've got the words raspberry Pi there and cobs, that's obviously who made it. It's a nice little case actually, I'm quite impressed with this. Uh, you've got the network symbol, USB symbols there, and then on the side, let me try and get the angle right because there's a lot of reflection. Uh, five volt DC, you've got your monitor image there which is for the HDMI, and then AV, micro USB there and GPIO. So that is it. I mean, look at that. That's pretty nice, eh? So that's it for the building. <laughs> it took me, like I said, about 20 minutes to put it together. 
It was a little bit fiddly, but I think that's a good job. I think that looks really nice. So let's move over to the computer. So here we are on my PC, and we need to get RetroPie onto the micro USB that we've got ready. Uh, make sure you use a Class 10 if possible, because it will run quicker and better all round. So it's good to spend out a little bit on a micro USB. Try and get like a 32 gig if you can. A 16 gig will do, but then you won't be able to put many ISOs and things like that on it. So it's worth getting a good micro SD up front in order to do this right, really. So the first thing we do is whack our micro SD into our computer and open it up. So for this tutorial, you will need the following two things to get RetroPie onto this SD card. You need SD Formatter and Win32 Disk Imager. Now, these can be downloaded from the links in the description. I will put them there and you will be able to go to them. And so you can see them, here they are. SD Formatter for Windows. First thing, just click on Accept when you go onto this page. So I'll leave this link in the description below. Click on Accept and it will download it. Very simple. Okay, so I don't need that because I've already got it downloaded. Next thing you need is Win32 Disk Imager. So when you go to the link that I've put in the description, it will automatically download Win32 Disk Imager from SourceForge. So it's very simple. Download. <laughs> I don't need it because I've already got it. But that is how you do it. You click on Keep and it will download. The next thing you will need is the actual RetroPie SD card image. Now there are two different types. If you've got a Pi 1 or a Pi 0, then you need to click on this one. If you've got a Pi 3 or a Pi 2, like myself, Pi 3, you click on this one. It is about 800 meg, um, so it's quite, it's got a fair chunk to it. So just click on the standard version, you will be redirected and it will start downloading. Look at that, 896 megabytes. Cancel that. Now when once you've downloaded that and you unzip it, it'll actually get a lot bigger. The last thing is more optional, but it's a handy thing to have on your machine uh, to connect to your Raspberry Pi later in order to dump ROMs on it. There are two ways of putting ROMs into RetroPie. The first way is via a USB. The second way is from an FTP client, or SFTP in this case. I use FileZilla. It's a very small footprint program, very easy to use. So the link I've put in the description below will take you to here. You just click on download now and you grab FileZilla and install it. So you will need to install all three of those and you will need the image, the SD card image, ready and unzipped. So just to unzip that, you just open up the zip file like so and just drag it into the same folder. I've put everything in the same folder to make it nice and easy uh, so I know where everything is. That's the best way generally to do it. You might want to create an emulation folder and put a separate folder inside that called Pi and put or RetroPie, whatever you want to call it, and put these files in it so they're there in case you ever want to do this again. The next step is very simple. See we've got our, our SD card in there. I'm just going to close that down and open up SD Formatter. So it's found straight away our F drive, which is the micro SD. And we can give it a label, so I'm just going to call it Retro Pi. And then all you do is you just click Format. So it's already in the right format for you, for Retro Pi. And it's very quick and very easy. It does it FAT32. You could do this yourself if you just wanted to right click and do Format. But this is quite a nice little program to have because you. You've got a lot of things you can do in here, um, including file size and blah blah blah, but it's just a very quick, very simple program to use. The next thing you do is grab Win32 Disk Imager, and it opens up like that. In order to put RetroPie on the SD, you need to use this, uh, otherwise you've got no way of putting it onto the SD. So you just click this little folder here, make sure the device is the right one. Probably best to unplug any spare USB drives or anything else that you've got plugged in at this stage, just so you know you're putting it on the right drive. So click on this little folder and you'll see Mega Man 10. No, that's not what we want. <laughs> we want to go to desktop, we want to go to Pi, and it will find the only image that's in that folder. So if you've created a folder specifically for this, there'll only be one image in there. You click on open, and there you go version 3.6 at time of making this video. 
Next thing you do, very simple, click on write. Writing to a physical device can corrupt the device. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. So this is this, this is your chance to say no and if, if you've chosen the wrong drive or anything like that. So just click yes and it will go through and it will install. So there we go, write successful. Win32 Disk Imager has put the image onto the SD card. It's that simple. Now I've obviously cut the video so that you don't have to sit around watching it load. But you're, it will take a bit longer than that. It'll probably take two or three minutes for it to write successfully. There we go, you just click OK, exit. So now that we've seen that the write is successful, it's very simple. Take your micro SD card out and pop it into your Raspberry Pi and power it up. You will need to make sure that you've got some kind of controller or keyboard plugged in. For the first run, generally I plug my keyboard in as it's a lot easier to navigate through the menus and then for second run, once you've enabled the Xbox 360 for example, um, drivers, then that will work perfectly after that. So let's get on over to the Raspberry Pi and I will show you what it looks like at this stage. So we've got the image on our SD card right here and all we need to do now is pop it into the Raspberry Pi. So it just goes in the bottom there and slots in. It sticks out a little bit but that doesn't matter does it? Really doesn't. So here it is. All we need to do now is plug it in. So I've got a great big USB keyboard here and I'm just going to plug it into the first socket in the Raspberry Pi, the USB socket. So that's that. Next up you want to stick in your HDMI or AV, dependent on what you're using. Um, I'm using the HDMI there, that goes in the HDMI slot. And last but by no means least, we need power. So at this stage, just plug it in, you'll see the light come on and that will mean your Raspberry Pi is a go. So let's move over onto the screen and see what happens. So here we are over on the Raspberry Pi and I powered it up and we get the retro Pi screen. Now I've sped this up so that you don't have to sit here and watch this going on, but this is what happens when you first boot it up. It goes through these dialogues to start it up and then we will get through to retro Pi itself. Emulation station loading and then you get the welcome message. So at this stage just hold down A on your keyboard and you will get this prompt and all we do now on the keyboard is we do up, down, left, right and all the way down to the bottom. Be wary that if you get one wrong it doesn't matter you can push up to go back on the keyboard. And here you go! So this is what it looks like when you boot it up. So let's get into the RetroPie config and I can show you a couple of things that will help you with the config and help you to maximize the potential of this. So first thing we need to do is configure the Wi-Fi. All we do is click on that, press enter and then enter your Wi-Fi key. Hit enter again and that will connect. And once that's connected you'll be able to do a few things including updates and downloading themes and that sort of thing. It's definitely worth doing first off just to get that out of the way. Then we're going to go down to install themes. Just hit A on that and you'll go into the menu. And it says here if you wish to run more than 10 systems on themes other than carbon, pixel, blah blah blah. It's basically just a warning. So you can click OK on that. And I want to install the pixel theme. This theme is absolutely awesome. So you would have seen this right at the beginning of the video and it's an awesome theme that goes nicely with the retro theme. Next up we're going to go down to the Raspberry Pi configuration tool, it's the next option down. And there's loads of stuff you can change in here, including uh, overclocking, which is for Raspberry Pi 1s and 2s and 0s, not for 3s, you can't do it for 3s. But then if you go into advanced options, you can change the overscan. Just disable this, make sure this first thing you do, it basically, all that does is it gives you that black border around the screen as you can see here. Once we disable that, it'll get rid of that. The next thing to do is look at the memory split. Now there's lots of different people online who will tell you different memory splits to go for. Generally I'll just go for 320, it's a nice sort of in-between ground. And uh, then we go to finish, reboot, yes please, and then you go through that prompt. Now you can see the border has gone around the edge, that's the overscan turned off which is awesome and it looks a lot better. Um, and we are currently using that original theme and we just need to change that. So the next thing to do is go into RetroPie setup and there's a couple of things we need to do in here but the main thing we need to do is enable 
the Xbox 360 drivers. This just lets you use the uh, Xbox 360 controller properly. So at this stage, I'm still using my keyboard. I'm still going up, down, left, right, and hitting enter on these screens rather than A. And if you scroll right down to the bottom, you'll see there's a whole load of stuff there that's cool. But go down to the bottom there, Xbox, Xbox 360 gamepad, and you just hit enable Xbox DRV. And that will enable the drivers for the Xbox pad. And then once you come back with an Xbox pad plugged in, it will recognize it straight away. So cancel out of that, and we go back and perform a reboot. Plug in the Xbox 360 controller. I've stuck it in. USB 1 there, just so it's recognized as the first pad. And then we power it up again. So here we just press enter instead of A, and then you get this screen, configure input. Hold down the A button on the Xbox 360 pad and you'll get this screen again where you define your keys. If you do it wrong, it doesn't matter because you can just simply key up and down on the uh, pad when you get to the end, it's not a worry. And that is about that, so let's head back over to my computer. So now you've got RetroPie up and running, and you want to put some ROMs on there, right? You want to put some of your backup games on there. It's very simple, there are two ways of doing this, and the first way I'm going to show you now is to get a USB stick, any USB stick, it doesn't matter, and uh, just format it, as so. Right click, format, and make sure that it's FAT32, and call it ROMs or retro retro pie I'm gonna call it <laughs> so just click start on that and click OK that will go ahead and format the USB and there we go format complete so click OK click close and you'll see you've got a nice empty USB all you do now is you open it up put a new folder in there called retro pie and that's it all you do then after that is take the USB out, plug it into your Raspberry Pi. It takes about a minute and it just populates the file system. So I'm going to go and plug it in now and then I'll come back and you will see the results. So we're back with the Raspberry Pi and our USB stick that we just formatted. You just simply take that and pop it into one of the slots there and you leave that for about a minute for it to sort out the file system and we'll pop back to our computer. So we're back on the PC and we're going to plug in the USB stick and have a look at what's been done. So RetroPie, we're just going to open the folder and there you go. There's a couple of folders that have been stuck in there, ROMs and configs. And if we double click on ROMs, you can see there all the folders for our lovely ROMs. So all you do at this stage is go to your emulation folder. Hopefully you've got on your computer or your folder with your ROMs in. So what I'm going to do here is grab a Super Nintendo game and we're going to make it Super Mario World just because I love this game. There we go. Okay, so in here we just go to SNES and we drag Super Mario World into there. Now you can just copy all of your ROMs on at this stage, but do remember once you plug the USB stick back into the Raspberry Pi it will take just as long to copy it onto the Raspberry Pi as it did to copy them onto the USB stick in the first place. So give it a while if you're going to do it this way. Once you've copied everything across, give it a while in the Raspberry Pi to copy everything. So give it sort of, say it takes 10 minutes, give it 10 minutes in the Raspberry Pi before you reboot it and look at what emulation you've got. So there we go, I've popped that on there. We can take out the USB stick and we can head on over to our Raspberry Pi. So if we just pop the USB stick back into the Raspberry Pi, give it just a minute and it will populate the ROMs that you've put on there into your Raspberry Pi memory, so on the micro SD card. So let's pop on over back to the RetroPie screen. So here we are back on the RetroPie and I was going to show you Super Mario World, but because of Nintendo's difficultness on YouTube and all that kind of stuff, I've decided to actually expand that a little bit and show you a PlayStation game, which is actually a lot harder on the Raspberry Pi CPU, but it copes with it very well. So the game that comes preloaded on RetroPie is Ridge Racer. And if we open that up, I will show you exactly how good that looks. Uh, including this initial loading screen. I mean, look at that. It couldn't get any better than that. I've completely forgotten about this until I loaded up Ridge Racer again. 
brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So I'm using my Xbox 360 pad here as you can see and I've also got the Raspberry Pi up and running there. So let's get started with the game, you'll be able to see that in the background running beautifully. Um, but for now, all I have to say is thank you very much for watching and I hope this has covered all the ground that you need for now to get your Raspberry Pi up and running with Retro Pi. I will do extra videos to show you extra things like FTP and other stuff like that. But for now, here's Ridge Racer, here's RetroPie. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you later.